Welcome to the broadcast, my fruits. Today is the 73rd birthday of the Princess Royal. We wish her many happy returns. And we're going to be speaking about the Princess Royal because it's time for me to dispel a myth. I'm going to share some inside information with you from an absolutely immaculate source from a close personal friend of the King. The subject matter is rather trivial, but I'm going to share it with you as an illustration of how misinterpreted, how misrepresented and how misreported exchanges within the royal family can be. Also, have you noticed what's going on with, with me, dear? Something's a little different. I'm not adorned with huge dazzling earrings to the lobe today. Have you noticed why? The little glints coming from these rhinestone studs. Yes, I've gone and pierced my ears, dear. <laughs> I've gone and pierced my ears. Can you believe it? And I'm blaming you. I'm blaming you fruity ones for encouraging me to do it when I mentioned that I was thinking about it recently. I've gone and done it, but I'm going to be stuck with these rather boring little studs for at least six weeks before I can change them through to something more exciting. It'll be worth the wait, won't it, though, for autumn and winter season? We'll have some, I can dispense with the clip-ons, my dear, and bring you the full parur. But you can hardly wait. <laughs> Back to matters at hand. And before anyone complains, get to the point. Leave this channel. Leave this channel if you want a news bulletin. I perform for my basketeers who appreciate the fact that they enjoy me taking my time to share the whispers and what I'm about to reveal today is an exclusive whisper to put right a wrong because whether it's some outrageous lie emanating from the likes of Giles Corrin and all that nonsense on stilts about Rose Hanbury and William which I always knew was a lie from the get-go and in fact I was the first person to come forward and categorically dismiss those rumours and put them in their place in a video to you. Yes, I was the first one to categorically dismiss those out of hand. And by the way, did you see that Catherine was out boogie woogieing with Rose Hanbury this week, or so the press tell us, at Houghton. In the grounds at Houghton, they hold a festival. Apparently Catherine was there with Sarah Chumley. You know, whether it's that kind of mischief or this kind of mischief, because if you cast your mind back a little while to the time of the coronation, there was a story doing the rounds. And I don't think that I brought it to your attention. I noticed it, but I don't think I even told you about it because I knew instantly that there was nothing to it. Instantly, because I know and understand what Anne and Camilla are about. Unfortunately, the wider world don't in their millions and they swallow all kinds of muck. Camilla confronted by Princess Anne over the Queen title at a tense coronation dinner. Do you remember this? Do you remember those headlines? I do. I knew it was sophistry, but so many people believed this kind of thing. Well, I'm in contact with somebody that was at that coronation dinner, which actually took place after the final rehearsals for the coronation. What we were told in the press is that Princess Anne confronted Camilla and told her, you're not the queen, you're the queen consort. <laughs> I ask you, as if, as if she would A, have the temerity uh, and B, have the inclination. The rumour actually emanated from an interview on GB News, which has become more and more like a tawdry cabaret of tabloid tales rather than a news channel in many ways, but it was an interview with April Ashley. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, my eyes deceived me. It was David Emmanuel, David, uh, Dame David Emmanuel. <laughs> I'm being a little bit naughty and a little bit mischievous. I must admit it was with David Emmanuel. Dame David Emmanuel, Lady of the Spencer Cloth and the Wedding Garter. <laughs> For those confused, he is the lady, uh, the chap that designed Diana's wedding gown along with his ex-wife, I think, Elizabeth, wasn't it? Well, he claimed that he'd heard all kinds of whispers from various sources that there was a big showdown, he said at this dinner, a big showdown. I did hear, I don't know if you know this story, I heard that there was a, a coronation dinner and apparently the Princess Royal, I don't know if you heard this one, the Princess Royal said, 
You're not queen. You're the queen's consort. Did you hear that one? Oh, yes. Wow. And listen, we all add a dose of drama to our stories and tales. I'm doing it right now. I would never deny such a thing. It says as much in the disclaimer under this video box. We all add a dose of drama. We all add a little spice, some salt, some flavoring to the meal. So I understand the playfulness and I understand the host with his feigned pearl clutching. Really? Did that really happen? Wow, wow. When he knows full well, it's all complete and utter BS, you know. And most of you understand this, but you have to understand the reason that I'm addressing it is because millions don't, millions don't. They just lap up everything they're told. And this really did have quite an effect, especially when it sets out to slur the reputation of our queen, who the channel purports to be rather supportive of, together with the monarchy. And it also breeds an element of bad will. Goodness gracious me. So, oh, so, yeah, there was a big so to showdown. Clarify, you have heard that Princess Anne said yep. to Camilla's face yeah. You're that not you are queen. queen consort, not queen. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Now, David Emmanuel said, I'm not one to gossip. No, I'm not one to spread Wow, that's gossip. so fascinating. <laughs> but this revelation. is what I've heard from a, quite, a, quite a few sources. I'm not one to gossip. Oh, just like Doc Cotton, eh? You know, I'm not one to gossip, my dear, but... Or, I don't know, Hilda Ogden. Mavis Riley. Oh, I say, I'm not one to gossip, Rita, but have you heard this? But let's get back to the whisper, shall we? This dinner was hosted by the King and Queen. As I say, it was after one of the final rehearsals. And my source, who is of Welsh descent, well, they are Welsh, was in attendance. Actually, another Welsh person was there, and that was Bryn Turfel, who performed at the ceremony. The King and Queen were there, the Prince and Princess of Wales were there, and I believe the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh was there, along with the Princess Royal and Sir Timothy Lawrence. The Yorks were not in attendance, of course. I'm told that this was at the King's home, but he's got several homes, hasn't he, my dear? I'm assuming it's the London home, so I'm assuming Clarence House, but I could be wrong there. But what a fabulous midnight supper, eh, my dear? It makes one come over all a bit higher. Saint Bouquet, Lady of the House speaking! What a midnight supper. How fabulous. So next time, because this source will be watching the broadcast today, next time, my dear, you know, if you need a plus one, hi. Charmed, I'm sure. Charmed, I'm sure. I can't wait to attend with you. Well, this video on GB News, which was the fountainhead of all the news reports that came after it, has got over one million views. Princess Anne told Camilla, you're not queen, claims Princess Diana's dressmaker, is what it's called. And I'm going to read out some of the nasty comments that come under it soon. But firstly, I will re exclusively reveal what actually occurred at that dinner party. Yes, and I must thank my associate and my informant, who is a long-term viewer of this channel, dare I say a basketeer, and her very close friend with familial ties to her, as I say, was a guest at this coronation dinner in question. And they were one of a literal handful of guests from the outside of the royal family who were invited to this dinner and are personal friends of the king and queen. And they are watching tonight. They were introduced to the royal family by the Waleses. They were decorated by the late Queen Elizabeth. And that decoration was upgraded by King Charles. So that's how highly thought of and esteemed they are. They are extremely ludicrously talented, rather charming, and a frequent of all the royal households, but in particular of Balmoral. In addition to those senior members of the royal family, there were five invited special guests, just five. These were five individuals who had contributed in a major way to the coronation. As I say, it is one of those esteemed guests who has given me the nod to share these details of the dinner and share exactly what was said during the encounter between Queen Camilla and Princess Anne. Because, yes, there was a dinner. There was an exchange between Anne and Camilla. Not exactly as David Emmanuel reported it, though. My source has a long-established working relationship with all the senior royals and was intimately involved with the coronation and also the Wales wedding and a few other little bits and bobs, including 
the Scottish service of Thanksgiving and celebration recently. The mood, I'm told, was very jovial. And I'm quoting now, many quips were had at all of our expenses, but it was hilarious. Choke on your wine, funny. They were having an absolutely splendid time. Lots of fun, lots of booze, lots of laughter. This is what happened. At one point, Queen Camilla had to ask a servant for a new napkin because hers had become sullied. At that point, quick as a flash, our darling Princess Royal Anne, in the spirit of the evening, interjected and said, well, excuse me, Mrs. Windsor, you haven't been crowned queen yet. Keep your dirty bloody napkin. <laughs> and she gave Camilla a wink. So it was cheeky, it was mischievous, but it was absolutely done with affection. When she said that, Queen Camilla in return then stood and acted out a curtsy to Anne. She performed a curtsy saying, Sorry, my lady, but I am nothing with my dirty napkin. And the room erupted with roars of laughter and gaiety as the Queen walked over to the Princess Royal and squeezed her shoulder. A kiss to the cheek was exchanged. So it was a fun, gentle, sparring, barely even sparring, just a bit of sauce. And isn't that what friends do? Isn't that what you do with your besties? I know I certainly do. I wouldn't have any, any friends if I wasn't allowed to poke a bit of mischief and poke at the decorum of the occasion. Well, there wasn't that much decorum of the occasion. It was a cosy, wonderful, sparkling, glittering, fun affair. That is what happened from the lips of one of the king's personal five friends who were invited to this family dinner. Now you know. And as for David Emmanuel's source, well, perhaps he was told something by somebody. Perhaps there were whispers that got warped and twisted. I don't know where he got it from. All I will say is that recollections may vary. My source is a soul of discretion, but because the sort this particular story involves nothing other than good cheer, they were happy on this occasion to recount the happy, affectionate atmosphere of the exchange and the occasion. Most of you understand the devious nature of the press. Millions of you do not. These are some of the comments after that widely seen video from GB News. These are the first few comments. Anne is a true royal. Spelt incorrectly, I might add, if you're such a great big fan of Anne, you should know there's an E on the end of it. Anne is a true royal. Respect for Princess Anne, saying it as it is. How amazingly disgusting a mistress can go from an adulterer to a queen of anything. Well, obviously, for one thing, you're not very au fait with millennia of characters of royal history. It's not as if she and Charles are one off, off in, the, in the realm of adultery. Anyway. Diana will always be loved, accepted and admired by the world and no one can compete with that on any level. So Diana gets a pass for her multiple adulteries, does she? But let's not make Diana out to be the vision of purity or a total saint. And if you're going to feel incredible sympathy for her, despite her adulteries, because she is perceived to be the one who suffered the most, you might want to have a conversation with Julia Carling, wife of Will Carling. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, find out. Once a consort, always a consort. Let's stop pretending. Much respect to Anne for saying it. Well, this person is one of a trillion dullards who don't seem to understand what a consort is and how everybody that marries into the royal family and marries a male member is a queen consort, not just Camilla. Diana would have been queen consort, publicly styled as queen. And the late queen understood, just to hammer it home in case any thickies are watching this, the late queen understood that even though she gave blessing for Camilla as queen consort, that is the same thing as giving blessing for them to be known publicly styled as queen, because that's what happens with queen consorts. That's the protocol, whether you're Mary, Alexandra, Diana, Camilla, the Queen of Sheba. I don't know, my dear. Maybe they don't have consorts in Egypt or wherever Sheba was. Where, no, Africa was. I don't know. I, I'm digressing. But you know. Yeah, 
A consort, a consort is always a consort, but a consort is always known by Queen. The only point that the late Queen Regnant was trying to hammer home was the point that Camilla deserved to be Queen and not Princess because it had been suggested in previous years by Clarence House that she would be Princess Consort. And the late Queen knew that and gave her blessing for that, and also Anne would have no problem with that. Almost 15,000 comments, all of them, or most of them, very spiteful, but now it's time to tell you the truth of the matter, and the truth of the matter is that they adore each other. And Anne would think that all those people, just in case, any of them ever happen to come across this broadcast, which I doubt because my basket is wonderful. But if, if they, do, if you do happen to come across this and you're watching, do you know what Princess Anne would think about you and your crappy little comments? Do you understand what sort of cretin, what sort of waster she would think that you are? What sort of unsophisticate? A total lack of sophistication and zero skills of discernment, evidently. Goose egg. Goose egg skills of discernment. You just lap up any trash you watch and read and spout it out. She wouldn't give you the time of day if you were serving her tea with white gloves and a pressed uniform. Anne and Camilla are old chums. Old, old, old chums. Anne was shagging Andrew Parker Bowles. She was shagging him back in the day. In 1970, the summer of 1970 was a wonderful summer, a wonderful summer of equestrian romance for Annie and Andrew Parker Bowles, A and A. It was Jilly Cooper on Tina. It was Sex in the City via the country on Stilts, my dear. It was all going on, and we all know about it. And there was no love lost three years later when Anne attended Camilla's wedding to Andrew Parker Bowles in 1973 along with the late Queen Mother and the late Princess Margaret Rose. Also, Andrew Parker Bowles is godfather to Zara. Yes, they've been cosy for decades. They were riding the same steed for some time, if I might put it delicately. They kiki over his bedside manner, don't you get it, my dear? They kiki over his bed bedside manner and compare notes as us ladies do. Us ladies and lady boys, you know, we like to compare notes, don't we, my dear, and say, oh, yes, we've ridden the same steed. What did you make about this? What did you make about that? Isn't it good? Isn't it weird? Isn't it? <clears throat> All of that kind of kiki. And they still bask in the afterglow of his affections, which are rather legendary, if you know anything about Andrew Parker Bowles. And lots of people do know quite a lot about Andrew Parker Bowles. Andrew Parker Bowles has rogered his way through half of the home counties. He's rogered his way through Norfolk. He's rogered his way through Wiltshire. He's rogered his way through town. Whether he's rogered his way up the River Creek, that's for me to know, my dears, and for you never to find out. I'm not one to gossip. Every disparagement and every lie... This is the wider point I wanted to make, by the way, when I looked through this, this comment section. Every disparagement and every lie that Meghan Markle has had to put up with and that Henry of Wales has had to put up with, formerly of Wales, is cruel and it's unfair. I understand that and I do actually feel for them. The fruitcakes that they have to deal with, especially in regards to all the conspiracy theories that are touted. It's cruel and it's unfair, but it is no different to the disparagement suffered by an old white woman. Not that I consider our queen old. She is young. She is young in spirit. But, you know, I'm using the phrase that is banded out. Old white guys, old white women. Well, this old white woman, our Queen Camilla, who is also privileged enough to be crowned queen. No, oh, privilege, privilege, old white woman. She has, to, she has suffered in the past much more disparagement than Meghan and Harry, but she continues to. That happens with everybody that marries into the royal family, whoever they are, wherever they come from. Another thing that is illustrated by the explanation of what really went on that shows us is the British sense of humour, which I've spoken about quite a lot previously. The sense of humour, the fun, dry, self-deprecating humour, which is mischievous and you can give each other a little bit of a poke and it's all taken in good humour. And actually, 
the person who related this information to me also said that they were sharing a drink with the Princess of Wales at this gathering, at this dinner. And I'm delighted to tell you that she has a fantastic sense of humour. She really is a fun, fun girl. Isn't that nice to know? She's relaxed. She is very funny, much funnier than she comes across to the wide world, less serious. And she was quipping away to this person and said, your accent slips back to Welsh after a red wine. What is truly revealed from what went on in this scenario is the informality. Despite the occasion and despite hierarchy, formal hierarchy, that is all put aside. The royal family take their duty and their work extremely seriously they do not take themselves seriously and isn't that good is that can you imagine there is one member that does but he departed for montecito he takes himself extremely seriously and so did his duchess do you get it do you get why they didn't fit in impossible to when you have two people that take them and, and their kinfolk so seriously and their mission and aren't so comfortable in jovial hearty surroundings where you can give each other a little poke you're not going to take offense at the old word at the odd word the princess royal can have a laugh with queen camilla and make fun of her for her dirty napkin well of course now she is crowned as is his majesty and the king shared two images of him with his sister with words of felicitation. He said, wishing Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal a very happy birthday today. He shared one image from 1951. It might not have been seen before, I'm not quite sure, but this was a few months before her first birthday in a pram and also shared a photograph from the day of the coronation of the two of them together. And this tribute comes days after her new appointment as Deputy Colonel in Chief of the Royal Regiment of Scotland. It recognises her strong links to Scotland and her existing links with other regiments and battalions. And here are their majesties making their way to church on Sunday a couple of days ago. This was at Crathy Kirk near Balmoral, of course. So it might appear a trivial matter, but I for one am happy to provide a riposte to all those nasty headlines in the lead up to the coronation and all that negative drama and tell you exactly what happened and reveal it for the first time that exchange and I'm very happy to share it. I'm also thankful to my basketeer, my contact who put me in touch with the close friend of the King who was able to confirm exactly what happened and bring it to you. A little tidbit, a little morsel, a little whisper from within palace walls. How delicious. Thank you. You know who you are. I won't mention your name for reasons of uh, privacy. Privacy, my dear. You know, I've started saying it the American way because, because we keep going on about the privacy tour, the privacy tour. I keep having to remind privacy, dear, privacy, privacy. You know, I like both ways, but you have your way in America. We have our way here. And it's privacy, my dear, and vitamin. But each to their own. Time to go. Yes, just to finish up on my ears, my earrings. I'm excited of earrings to come. I've already ordered a couple of pairs. And I will also thank you for recommending, when I mentioned that I was thinking about having them done, you recommended having them done by needle as opposed to gun. Now, I did actually have pierced ears when I was a teenager, I think, 14 perhaps. I got my ears done then and I actually had my nose pierced for a while. <laughs> it kept falling out in inopportune moments to the story. Um, but the ears were done by the gun and I'm just repeating this in case anybody else is thinking of having them done or is getting their kids ears done. Needle, needle, needle. I mean, to be honest, now that I'm not a teenager, I would have Googled it and found out the best way to get it done myself. But some people don't do that and they think that the gun is the same as the needle. It has the same effect. The needle is so far superior because I've had, them, they've, I've had them done both ways now in the same place. And the pain factor is about the same. You get a second of a strong sting but the difference is when I had it done with the gun the ear was throbbing for quite a while afterwards and it was sort of uh, sticky for a while 
and they advise you to turn it and do all kinds of things to it and I mean it was fine but it wasn't as pleasant as the experience of the needle because since that that moment it went in and it stings since then zero pain and I mean zero nothing at all you know if I was to poke it about it would feel a bit tender and a bit sore no pain in my she said it might bleed a bit but no blood nothing coming out of it absolutely wonderful splendid so far and I you know I clean it with a bit of salt water uh, twice a day but it, it's going very well so really great difference there and those guns can do quite a bit of damage you know nothing especially nasty i'm sure it's fine in most places but find a place of good repute someone with experience a sterile environment and go with the needle my dear and yes it does hurt for a second but my pain threshold is fairly good actually i think it's a little better than most i've got one friend she watches the broadcast actually but she she dared even pluck her eyebrows she has such a low pain threshold but i come to realize everybody is completely different We've all got different pain thresholds, haven't we? The trick is with pain, and I haven't got any kinks in the way of pain, by the way, just in case anybody gets the wrong idea. I know these things are very popular. One way to deal with pain, I think I'm rather good at it with those kind of procedures is because A, I know and have had experience with intercostal diaphragmatic breathing, which is where lots of exercises here filling your lungs from the diaphragm here and then and then expanding the chest that's why I was able to recite I am the very model of a modern major general to the to you the other day on one breath although I, I used to have more athleticism with it but a lot of that sort of training with the diaphragm and breathing and also yoga lots of yoga that I've done not so much recently but it kind of sticks with you meditationally and so my lungs are quite good and used to the muscle memory of breathing and being able to breathe through pain and you know they tell you sometimes when they give you an injection or in this case when they were piercing my ears they breathe in as you do it and the trick is to hold that breath stick with the inhale as the pain comes keep breathing don't let it you know the breath will ground you and stabilize you as the pain is coming in and transcend your throat and by the time you reach the top of that inhalation and you're ready to exhale it out it's more or less gone and you can breathe out any any nastiness with the exhalation you know it's about focusing on the breath thank you for joining me my darling fruits many happy returns to the princess royal i look forward to seeing you next time my tip jar is in the description box and do leave me a nice fruity juicy comment ta my dears and toodle pip